Antarctica is a long way away from where you live. Wherever you live, not many people have been there, plus it's difficult and expensive to go. And let's not forget, it's beyond freezing cold. Today, watchful satellites fly overhead, probing radar and lasers have allowed scientists to peer beneath the thick ice, and yet, in spite of the reach of these new tools, the continent still holds its secrets close, but not all of them. 15 Most Mysterious Discoveries Made in Antarctica Shackleton's Whiskey Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton was an Irish-born British explorer who was a principal figure of the period known as the Heroic Age of Antarctic Exploration. Devoted to creating a legacy, in 1907 he led the Trans-Antarctic Expedition. Disaster struck when his ship, the Endurance, was crushed by ice. He and his crew drifted on sheets of ice for months until they became stranded on Elephant Island in Antarctica. Marooned in incredibly harsh conditions and the loss of their boat, the men continued on. It wasn't until 1917 that they were rescued, seven years later. And now, a case of whiskey, which spent more than 100 years buried there, was recovered. Five cases were dug up before being carefully thawed by museum officials. Do you understand how valuable these bottles of booze are? Shackleton once famously said, If I had not some strength of will, I would make a first-class drunkard. His journey with his crew to Antarctica began with 25 crates of booze. His expedition ran short of supplies on its long trek and turned back about 100 miles short of its goal, leaving behind supplies. But the whiskey remained. A billionaire owner of a Glasgow-based firm even flew a case back, too, using his private jet. That's how valuable this whiskey is. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. With the invention of the internet and especially access to satellite images on Google Earth, there are plenty of purveyors of the so-called truth online, ready to interpret icebergs and other ice patterns and structures for their benefit. They're never just natural formations, but clearly secret facilities, government cover-ups, buried UFOs, you name it. Antarctica is unlike the rest of the planet, it's barren cold and almost seems like it's from another world. So it would make sense if a UFO were to land on Earth with the hope of going undiscovered. There's always parking, at the very least, but if this alien in the ice actually left the spaceship to stroll around, they obviously weren't prepared for the brutal conditions. The only way for these folks to understand their discovery is to dig it up and thaw it out. Do you think this is really what it looks like? An ice cube alien? Comment below and use the hashtag sweet topic. The Great Wall of Ice The ancient Greeks demonstrated that Earth was a sphere more than 2,000 years ago, and the gravity that keeps everything on the planet from flying off into space could exist only on a spherical world. Duh! But in some circles, the planet appears as a pancake-like disk with the North Pole smack in the center and an edge surrounded on all sides by an ice wall that holds the oceans back. This ice wall, thought by some flat earthers to be Antarctica, is now a so-called tourist destination. We'll explain. Organizers of an annual conference that brings together people who believe that the Earth is flat are planning a cruise to the purported edge of the planet. The goal? To test so-called flat earthers' assertion that Earth is a flattened disk surrounded at its edge by a towering wall of ice. There's just one catch. Navigational charts and systems that guide cruise ships and other vessels around Earth's oceans are all based on the principle of a round Earth. GPS relies on a network of dozens of satellites orbiting thousands of miles above our planet. Signals from the satellites beam down to the receiver inside of a GPS device, and at least three satellites are required to pinpoint a precise position because of Earth's curvature. It's science! Antarctic Loch Ness Monster Ever heard of the Loch Ness Monster? Or Nessie, as it's known locally, it's a creature in Scottish folklore that's said to inhabit Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands, often described as large, long-necked, and with one or more humps protruding from the water. Lucky for us, fossil hunters have found the remains of an enormous sea creature that bears an uncanny resemblance to the mythical Scottish beast. Researchers uncovered the 70-million-year-old remains of a massive elasmosaur, which would have weighed 15 tons and was from the depths of Antarctica. Experts say that the 40-foot-long animal is the largest of its kind ever found. Now back to old Nessie. Some believe that the mysterious Loch Ness creature is a long-necked plesiosaur, like the elasmosaur, that somehow survived when the dinosaurs were wiped out. 
How likely is that? Not very. But back to the Loch Ness of the Antarctic, these were terrestrial, air-breathing dinosaurs which lived about 80 and a half million years ago. They had the longest necks of their kind, which weighed up to several tons, and the fossil they discovered is one of the most complete ancient reptile fossils ever found. <laughs> Super Rare Lava Lake Despite what the movies tell you, very few of the Earth's 1,500 potentially active volcanoes actually contain bubbling pools of lava. However, an incredibly rare lake of lava has been discovered on one of the world's most remote and volcanically active island ranges. The incredibly rare lava lake of Mount Michael measures 295 and 700 feet in diameter and has temperatures soaring above 2160 degrees Fahrenheit. Until recently, only seven volcanoes worldwide were known to have lakes of bubbling lava, but in 2019, scientists discovered this one on the remote Saunders Island, one of the South Sandwich Islands near the South Pole. Observations of the volcano have proven difficult owing to its remote location and the fact that it's almost 3,000 feet high and difficult to climb. However, a modern satellite imagery can help survey isolated locations such as these. As you can see, a distinct hotspot can be seen in orange in the crater of the volcano. The true color image shows volcanic ash over the snow and smoke plumes coming from its crater, drifting southeastwards. But don't worry, this place is fairly remote and doesn't pose a threat to anyone. <laughs> UFO Crash Landing Site Alien enthusiasts, get ready! Doesn't Antarctica make for a great location for potential UFO activity? There's not a lot of people around, that's for sure. And this unknown object is leaving a trail of mystery for researchers and conspiracy theorists alike. The above image and video claim that this is evidence of a crashed UFO. Despite countless so-called sightings, there's little known evidence to suggest that aliens have ever been on Earth. In fact, there's little evidence so far that supports the theory that life exists anywhere else in the universe. But that doesn't mean it isn't possible. And that's why more than one conspiracy theorist believes this is evidence, a metallic-looking flat disk that's sitting in an area that appears to be the location of an ancient alien base. They spotted the supposed spaceship in Antarctica using Google Maps. Apparently, the craft was revealed after climate change had melted the ice and snow. Is this 100% evidence that aliens have lived on Earth? You decide. NASA and other skeptics agree that the UFO and other similar findings are just the effects of a psychological phenomenon. It's when the brain tricks the eyes into seeing familiar objects or shapes in familiar patterns or textures, such as ice. Ice Volcano This volcano is an enigma. It's the most southerly active volcano in the world, located on Ross Island in Antarctica. Known as Mount Erebus, this volcano has been constantly erupting since 1972 and is erupting right now. For at least the past few decades, there have been lava lakes bubbling in the summit crater and feeding a continuous plume of gases across the Antarctic continent. The gas escapes fissures on the sides of the mountain, the ice pack and snow on the surface begin to melt and hollow out, creating remarkable cave formations. They become fumaroles with deadly volcanic gases pouring out from their tips with 10 feet wide volcanic bombs being thrown through the air. It's one of several volcanoes in West Antarctica that are likely to be fed from a deep-seated hot upwelling, or plume, inside the Earth. It's an intraplate volcano that lies in a rift where the Earth's crust has been thinned by slowly being stretched. Erebus is a large volcano and one of the largest scientific research stations in Antarctica. Although it has only ever been seen to have minor eruptions, it has certainly had larger eruptions in the past. And it's spectacular, with wonderful views into the active crater and beyond. It has to be one of the most remote monitored volcanoes in the world. Fish with clear blood Want to see clear blood running through the veins of a very special fish? You're already looking at it. Meet the Antarctic ice fish. Every vertebrate on the planet has the same general mechanism for getting oxygen to its cells, red blood cells containing a protein called hemoglobin. Oxygen-binding proteins like hemoglobin were once thought to be imperative for life for multicellular organisms because of their crucial role in delivering oxygen throughout the body. Not for ice fish. Incredibly, genetic changes enable ice fish to thrive without it. And it gets better. 
These Antarctic dwelling fish have translucent white hearts, which have also helped to live without red blood cells or hemoglobin, which explains some of their unique adaptations to living in the extreme cold of our southern pole. This probably comes down to a genetic mutation and means their blood carries 90% less oxygen than red blood. And they survive partly because frigid Antarctic waters are oxygen rich. Ice fish also have enormous hearts that pump huge volumes of blood around their bodies. Any freeze in their blood stops them from freezing, but as they're so well adapted to the cold, their future in a warming world remains uncertain. <laughs> Musical Ice Shelves Much like the wind over the great sand dunes creates a kind of music known as the Song of the Dunes, winds blowing across snow dunes on Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf behave the same way. Wind will cause the mass of ice slab surface to vibrate, producing a near constant drum roll of seismic tones. The Ross Ice Shelf is Antarctica's largest ice shelf, a Texas-sized plate of glacial ice fed from the icy continent's interior that floats atop the Southern Ocean. The ice shelf blocks adjacent ice sheets on the mainland, impeding ice flow from land into water like a cork in a bottle. They found the winds caused the slab surface to vibrate, producing near-constant sounds, and that's why the massive slab of ice sings. Just like musicians can change the pitch of a note on a flute by altering which holes air flows through or how fast it flows, weather conditions on the ice shelf can change the frequency of its vibration by altering its dune-like topography. Extremely sensitive sensors were buried six feet under the surface to capture seismic motions. The ice shelf's song is too low in frequency to be heard by human ears, and it was only made audible by speeding up the recording about 1,200 times but scientists could potentially use these sounds to monitor changes in the ice shelf from afar. <laughs> Saltiest Water on the Planet Don Juan is a legendary fictional Spanish libertine who devoted his life to seducing women, but he almost had nothing to do with this remote place in Antarctica. Yet somehow at the bottom of the world, in a frozen desert, is Don Juan Pond. It's only a few inches deep, and so salty that it remains liquid even at temperatures of minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. It's more like an oversized puddle than a pond, but this place has had scientists, particularly astrobiologists, buzzing. The salt is not the same as the seasoning that's shaken on food. Instead, it's 95% calcium chloride, which significantly reduces the freezing point of water, helping the pond remain liquid even in the harsh Antarctic winter. The pond is very salty due to a combination of two factors, the high rate of evaporation in the dry environment where it's located and the ability of calcium chloride to form much more concentrated solutions than common table salt. But where that salt comes from has been a long-standing mystery. Researchers use the Martian-like landscape to study what may perhaps be humanity's next frontier, Mars. As Mars boasts similar sets of slopes, scientists use Don Juan Pond as a base for studying water in space. Rainforest in the Antarctic When you think of Antarctica, you think of ice. Maybe the odd penguin, but overall, this place is often perceived as a frozen wasteland. Far from it, actually, but there's more to the story, 100%. At the time of the dinosaurs, the continent was covered in swampy rainforest. Hard to believe, right? 145 million to 66 million years ago was a warm period during which Earth had a greenhouse climate and vegetation grew in Antarctica. An expedition drilling into the seafloor has discovered the root network of this ancient forest and that temperatures were higher than expected. They drilled a narrow hole down into the seafloor near the Pine Island Glacier in West Antarctica. 1,200 miles from today's South Pole. The team found evidence of more than 65 different kinds of plants within the material, revealing that the landscape near the South Pole would have been covered in a swampy rainforest similar to that found today in the northwestern part of the South Island of New Zealand. Such conditions, they add, could have been produced if carbon dioxide levels were far higher than previously thought with annual temperatures up to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Alien Rocks this meteorite is famous because of claims that it could have evidence for life on Mars. But how do we know it's from Mars? And how did it get to Earth? Whatever the reason, some scientists think it could have signs of life. It was found in the Allen Hills in Antarctica in 1984 by a team of meteorite hunters. Just like other groups of meteorites, it's thought to have originated on the Red Planet. 
However, it does not fit into any of the previously discovered groups. In 1996, a group of scientists found evidence of microscopic fossils of bacteria in the meteorite, suggesting that these organisms also originated on Mars. These claims were controversial from the beginning, and the wider scientific community ultimately rejected the hypothesis. But the claims immediately made headlines worldwide. U.S. President Bill Clinton even gave a speech about the potential discovery. Extraterrestrials were on the country's mind, but there wasn't Martian life exactly, but the scientists argued they had found strong evidence of biogenetic activity. And the initial research and the enormous scientific and public attention caused by it are considered turning points in history. It reinvigorated the field of astrobiology, rekindled NASA's interest in Mars, and changed how some scientists think. Finger of Death Under the ice can seem like a completely alien world. A new video has been released that shows the formation of a mysterious underwater icicle on the ocean floor. It's called a brinicle and footage was recorded using a special time-lapse camera that caught the brinicle's entire formation process. And this is what's really going on here in the freezing waters as sub-zero brine slowly sinks to the ocean floor. They call it the ice finger of death. See why? A brinicle is formed when the sea ice cracks and leaks out the saline water to the open seas. As the brine is heavier than the water around it, it sinks to the ocean floor while freezing the relatively fresh water it comes into contact with growing downward and more deadly. This rare nature event freezes and kills everything around it once it touches the seabed. As it grows, it catches various bottom-dwelling creatures around it. R.I.P. sea urchins and starfish, they become encased in ice, completely frozen by the brine. Pools of super-cold brine may also form and remain beneath the site of brinical formation. These so-called black pools of death can also be deadly to small sea creatures that swim through them. Brinicles are not dangerous to humans because we seldom travel beneath the ice sheets where they form. 8,000 foot deep observatory. Neutrinos, do you know what they are? They're subatomic particles that have no electrical charge and a very small mass. They're referred to often as ghost particles and it's one of the most abundant particles in the universe. They're moving through you right now. However, they're incredibly difficult to detect. Welcome to the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory, the detector that identified the first likely source of neutrinos. These high-energy astronomical messengers provide information about events like exploding stars, gamma-ray bursts, and cataclysmic phenomena involving black holes and neutron stars. The station has 86 cables that reach beneath the ice, supporting 60 digital optical modules that hang at depths all the way down to over 8,000 feet it took seven years to drill holes for the cables with a 25,000-pound hot water hose that melted roughly 200,000 gallons of water per hole. They essentially search for signs of these tiny subatomic particles as they streak through the crystal clear ice thousands of feet below the surface. The observations, made in coordination with telescopes around the globe and in Earth's orbit, help resolve a more than a century-old riddle about what sends subatomic particles such as neutrinos and cosmic rays speeding through the universe. Manhattan-sized iceberg A huge chunk of ice in Antarctica has broken off the Brunt Ice Shelf almost a decade after scientists first detected growth of vast cracks in the ice. And now, the iceberg more than 20 times the size of Manhattan split from Antarctica. The ginormous iceberg measures roughly 490 square miles and is nearly 500 feet thick. Warning signs of an imminent crack started before when a new chasm called the North Rift emerged and started heading toward another major crack roughly 21 miles to the northeast. The rift crept further in that direction, moving at about a half mile per day before widening substantially in the span of hours, eventually causing the iceberg to cut itself loose. Experts hadn't seen an event like this since 1971, and though some people would be quick to point the finger at climate change for such major events, scientists have made it clear that these could have also be natural occurrences. It's just a massive step in the life cycle of an ice shelf. It grows until it's too big to support itself, collapses, and then the whole process starts again. The Brunt Ice Shelf, a 492-foot thick slab of ice, flows west at 1.2 miles per year and routinely breaks off icebergs, but not like this. 
Gigantic Spiders of the Abyss Throughout the world's oceans exist over 1,300 species of a strange, creepy sea creature, the sea spider. ROV cameras reveal unique encounters with these frightening arthropods in depths previously inaccessible to marine scientists, and scientists have wondered for decades why marine animals that live in the polar oceans can reach giant sizes, but nowhere else. While most species are less than an inch long, those that live in the deepest waters here can reach up to 20 inches across. These long-legged creatures breathe through holes in their legs that get bigger as they grow, allowing them to take in more oxygen and let the spiders grow to beyond their expected size. At such temperatures, they're able to keep their metabolisms really low, meaning that they need less oxygen. In turn, it's this that frees them up to be able to grow, and grow, and grow. Scientists have suggested this example of gigantism is possible because of the extreme cold found in these waters. Although they're more closely related to crabs than spiders, there's no need to be afraid of them. Giant sea spiders scuttle along the deep seafloor on their eight disproportionately long legs, feasting on sponges, moss animals, and worms. But not us. So, what do you think? Is Antarctica the final frontier or the key to our future? Maybe it's both. While you ponder that question, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and stick around for more great videos.